Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kashawn Hopkins. I'm an instructional technology specialist from Oklahoma Public School Resource Center, and I'm delighted to be back to uh, present another Tech Talk. Uh, this one's titled Engaging in Digital Citizenship, and I want to do that through the lens of a tool that I've already talked about, which is called Blogger. Um, yeah, so I'm happy to be back um, doing these, and the idea is that I want to help um, present application, practical applications for this tool um, through these different, really desirable things um, that we would want students to, to, to walk away with, and all of them are done through, um, at least in this set, the ISTE standards, and so I might do some other ones, branch out, uh, but at least for right now, I think uh, digital decision is a good place to start. Um, typically, I'd be joined here um, with our technology director, um, Kurt Bernhardt, who's going to be sitting out for that one, and that's all right. Um, if you want to reach out to either one of us to talk about anything that has to do with technology, we'd love to have that conversation with you. And the best way to do it would be through an email that we both share, um, techteam at opsrc.net. Um, you can use that to reach out to either one of us. Uh, moreover, uh, I want you to consider these slides that I have a resource for you. So if you want to grab them here, um, I have a link for them. I'm going to read this out since it's case sensitive. So it's going to be lowercase t period ly forward slash s three two three. Moreover, um, I have a link to our, our Tech Talks page, and so I just want us to take a moment to tour that real quick, just in case you are unfamiliar with. Um, if you go here, highly recommend that you bookmark it because this is evolving as I am um, doing more of these Tech Talks here. And so at the very top, we have our upcoming Tech Talks. Right now, we're in this set that really takes these ideas, things like digital citizenship, collaborating, constructing knowledge, empowering learners, helping them make decisions here on what's the right tool for the right job. Stuff that I've already um, talked about and mentioned before, but they weren't really the center stage uh, when I was talking about the other tools because I was really just focusing on, okay, what can this tool do and why is it worth your time? From here, I want to take that that foundational stuff that I've been doing and build more onto it and using those tools as a lens. So I'm, I'm sort of flipping the script on here. And so, um, yeah, if this sounds like something you're interested in, I got plenty of events that are coming up that I would love for you to attend. Um, if you scroll down a little bit more in the middle of the page, we have a button for you to suge suggest future tech topics or tools. And at the very bottom, I'm pretty proud of this little section because it represents all the tech talks that I've already done up to this point, the archives section. And so I've done talks over technology standards, tech integration models, um, which I'm going to be taking those and, and embedding them into um, this series that I'm doing. We have special interest topics that I've been recently um, started back up in March. And uh, at the bottom, we have individual tech tools on here. And, and something that I had mentioned before, but I did Blogger uh, last year. Um, and if you are unfamiliar with Blogger, I'm, I'm going to kind of go on the assumption that you are um, as I'm going through digital citizenship here. And so if you feel like you need some more experience or practice, or you just need an idea of like, how to go in and log in and do some of the basic stuff. I think um, my tech talk that I did for that still holds up. The, the functionality is essentially the same. Um, and so each of them, each of these um, tech talks has a video recording and a set of presentation slides, um, which also have a bunch of resources related to whatever the topic happens to be. So please take a moment, check all that stuff out. There's some really great things out here. And um, I'm looking forward to building on it, starting with this topic. Oh man, I have been I've been very much looking forward to this. And um, like I said before, um, these at least this set that I'm doing right now, all these ideas come from the ISTE standards, which is a set of technology standards um, that are used internationally. And um, digital citizenship is actually not the first one. I'm trying to empowered learners the first one i wanted to start with digital citizen because i feel like um this idea of 
of being aware on how you're presenting yourself in the digital world, but also the way that you interact with others permeates through the other standards so well. Um, and really it comes down to, you know, that golden rule that we taught a long time ago, and it's something that's worth repeating is, you know, treat others the way that you want to be treated. Um, if you're putting out intellectual property out there, of course, you should respect the intellectual property of others. Um, you know, um, the way that you can interact and communicate with people, you know, you want to be treated with respect, just like we would um, when we're interacting with our with each other and in a non-digital setting here so um yeah I, I just feel like i i felt i resonated with this topic and so i felt like i would be um a, a little I, I would just love to talk about this kind of stuff so let's jump on in here to my objective here after this tech talk educators will be able to integrate blogger into their classroom to help students work responsibly in an interconnected digital world safely legally and ethically. So a, a couple of different parts on that one. But like I said before, the focus is going to be more on the applications, um, the standards, how can, what, what are, what, what's what we really want students to get out of here? Because I've been talking about in a couple of my other tech talks is that you want to uh, try to select the right tool for the right job. Um, and really what you want to get out of the tool is way more important than the tool itself. The tool can be interchangeable. In fact, I'm presenting Blogger and I'm only going to be really touching on a, a fraction of what I think digital citizenship um, is. But I think it's a really good example. If you just, if you're not entirely sure where to start, I think it will get you um, a good chunk of the pieces of what you're looking for and at least can serve as a starting point for you and your students here. Next, uh, a schedule on what to expect out of this tech talk. Um, I'm going to be uh, sort of building this argument on why I think digital citizenship is going to be important, how it's going to interact with the tool and how we can take the tool and sort of embed them inside of these, this standard that we're, we're unpacking here. And so uh, that way I'm gonna start with the standard itself, uh, 1.2, the second, um, ISTE student standard, digital citizen. Um, next, where I'm going to bring in, I'm going to take the parts of the standard that we've broken down and connect it back into uh, how can Blogger be a good example or what are some really specific things, practical things that we can take back into our classroom and use Blogger with the intention of getting what the standard is trying to provide. Um, after that, I want to break the standard down and look at its substandards that we have here. Um, and so these are um, smaller, um, these are little targets, little goals that you can shoot for that ISTE has already broken down. Um, and then I'm going to connect it back into uh, those actionable, those practical applications that, I was, that I'm going to bring up. Uh, we're gonna connect it all together. So we're gonna create this little, this little lovely sandwich uh, between or like a double decker situation. I don't know. Some some mood for it. like it's more like a lasagna. I'd say there's different layers that we're trying to stack on top of each other. And at the very end, we're going to have something that you know. After you're done with this, um, you'll have a clear idea on how to use Blogger to um, get these to achieve these standards um, with your students. And then we're going to wrap things up. And I'm going to share some resources. Okay. Doing okay in time, so uh, yeah, let's jump on in. Okay, first, uh, we're gonna pull from the text here. Um, I have a link on the bottom left-hand corner. I usually like to have those if I'm referring to anything on here. Um, if you haven't seen the ISTE standards before, if you go to that link on the bottom left-hand corner of that slide, um, it'll look a little something like this. There are seven standards and I can't wait to unpack them, but the second one, if you click on it, um, you can see the four different sub uh, standards that we have here. And I'm going to really focus in uh, initially so we have a, a clear idea of the table that we're trying to set here, uh, the uh, definition of digital citizens right here. So um, word for word, this is students recognize the rights and abil uh, responsibilities and opportunities of living, learning, and working in an interconnected digital world and they act and model in ways that are safe, 
legal, and ethical. So let's take a moment to unpack a bit of that. Um, I've bolded the actions of what things that we want to expect from our students. And this comes in two pieces. The first of which is students simply recognizing. Um, and this comes with, you know, when you're, when you're building content, you know, those first steps, you know, if you're thinking about Bloom's taxonomy, those first steps is just really taking a look and seeing, okay, here is the information. This is what's factual. This is what we have here. So you will take a thing, look at things like, um, the rights. What what rights do we have uh, when we're online? Uh, what responsibilities do we have uh, towards each other? How, how do we respect um, the space that other people are taking out there? And then uh, one of the th big things is like opportunities. So this I consider like taking a look at equity, taking a look at access, like you, like students having access to internet. Hi and reliable and high speed internet is such a huge boon. And I think that is really overlooked unless it's explicitly pointed out. Um, and so that first step is just really building that foundational knowledge. And I think um, there's tons of resources to really help out with that. If this is not something that you you feel comfortable or you at least um, like, like me, uh, even though I'm in technology in, in the technology world, it's not like I took like a, a digital citizenship class. It's something that I had to learn and negotiate um, through my own interaction. So this is something that students already um, at least have experience on, but they might not necessarily be aware that this is what they're interacting with. So I think this is this first section here of students recognizing is the first step. It's building that foundation of, of this awareness that students are going to have. And then next, and this is key. So this is like students might have this recognition area, at least on, on some level intuitively, but this part over here, they act in models that are uh, in model in ways that are safe, legal and ethical is them taking those first ideas on the first part of this definition and actually applying it in a space. And I think this is where you're gonna get tons of value out of Blogger or and any other technology tool that you feel are, is going to support digital citizenship. And uh, because, you know, this is, this is something that students can do in a vacuum, but I feel like it's more robust if they have a space where they can actually interact with others and make this as a practice. Like ideally digital citizenship is just a second nature. Students already have that awareness. They're like, okay, people are different than me and I need to figure out ways to accommodate that. Or uh, if I post this, um, this poster or this graphic and I didn't create it myself, what is a way that I can attribute this to make sure that people are getting the proper um, they're, they're, they're getting the proper uh, credit for the work that they've done and, um, and, and ways and, and like another thing that we're hopefully that they're intuitively doing, but they might still need practice at it. And I see even like adults and stuff that I, that I've worked with before. Like I, 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 I've worked in the IT background from before and people just doing simple things like protecting your password or changing it every once in a while or uh, not ma making sure that you're not clicking on phishing emails. And so there's a lot um, to try to, to get ahead of and, and try to, to work through those precautions. Um, and a lot of that comes from, from practice. And I think you can accomplish a lot of that um, through Blogger. So that's what I want to try to, to argue for. All right. Let's talk a little bit about um, through some of the research that I've done for, for digital citizenship. It's genuinely agreed that there are nine elements to it. All of them are listed here and there's no way that I have enough time to go every single one of them. In fact, Blogger doesn't necessarily fit with all of them. You can kind of stretch some of these a little bit, but I picked four that I think are really um, a great examples. And so this is something that I don't think can be accomplished with a single tool. Um, if you do have a great example, I would love to hear it out because maybe I can redo this one um, and do it with that tool. But at least for now, I think Blogger really does the four on the right that I have uh, sort of red box there on the right because it doesn't necessarily meet with like digital commerce or anything. But communication, etiquette, rights and responsibility and security and privacy, I think it does these four things quite well. And I think this is where we can start pulling applications. So I'm going to take those four and connect them with the Blogger.
And so I got the four on there. You see I've bolded uh, from top to bottom. And I want to talk about four things that you might already be doing. Uh, but if you're not, it's something that I highly recommend that you consider. And all of these, um, I would highly recommend, like, like this is a tool that you definitely need to put in your student's hand, have them play around with it, and then have something regular um, that they can check big, back into. I believe last time I talked about Blogger, I, I mentioned using it as like a journal, or you can use it as like a resource hub that students are starting to put together resources. Uh, but giving them like the opportunity to really um, negotiate uh, how they are going to present themselves and what information that they're going to put out, but also um, not just have that being one way, let this communication be a two-way situation, having them take advantage of like commenting features. And so I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. So let's start breaking these applications down. First of which is communication. So this is, and by the way, if you didn't get a chance to look at the um, this infographic that I have here, really well done. Thank you, AGC Parts Education on their really good stuff. Uh, if you want to have like a little idea of what each of these mean, you can do it through here. But um, communication is understanding different digital tech mediums on here. And so um, students, uh, one thing that I think is nice about Blogger, and they have HTML in there here too. So if this is something that you want to expand to that, you can do it as well. Uh, but students have the uh, the choice on how they're going to present themselves. They can do it through text or images or videos. They got a bunch of different things. They're already embedded. They just have to click some buttons and really navigate and figure out how to put a bunch of um, different pieces together to express whatever their ideas are going to be. And they can also do this through um, single post that they can do, which is like shorter entries, or they can do it like a full page. Like one of the really great things that you can do with Blogger initially is create a, a separate about me page, um, a way that they can express themselves um, and bring in their culture, bring in their background, bring in that unique um, experience that they have out there um, and, and present themselves. But do it in a way that is safe, that you know is not going to expose them to, to to threats that are online. So this also gives them, you know, kind of blending a little bit into security and privacy. You'll see that a lot of the stuff blends with each other. Um, but yeah, having just giving students the opportunity to create and put themselves on and think about how they're going to present themselves. So next is etiquette. Um, on this, this is defined as encouraging responsible behavior online. And so I think a way that Blogger has people do this is through the co commenting section. And so um, on any post, any page, whoever's the owner of, of that piece of content can choose to turn comments on or off. And sometimes that's the right decision. Just having something out there, turning the comments off, totally not a problem. But um, it, I, I think it's good to have that, that dialogue because through the comments, I mean, you'll see through social media, you know, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, like comments is where the community is at. This is how you can have um, the person doing the blog being someone that tries to provoke that thought and put that out there in a responsible way. And then having people doing um, comments and then have, you know, build on that by having the person who owns the blog, um, you know, pushing for for more of that interaction and that discussion on there. So it's it's definitely not something that you should shy away from. Uh, but it is like a case like like every time you post something out there, they should be thinking: Is this something that I want a discussion uh, to 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 be about? Like, what 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 would good come from discussion about this topic that's here? Okay. Next, rights and responsibility. So this is defined on this is freedoms of all online users. So this is thinking about uh, if I'm going to be online, what rights do I have? And with those rights, how can I be responsible and help protect the rights of others? And so um, building on that commenting, uh, there is a tool that is built into Blogger that allows you to moderate comments. And you can also invite others to help moderate them out. So this is something that I'm gonna actually switch over to Blogger to show you. I'm gonna switch on over here and I already have a blog that I've created. I think this may have been the one that I created for the Tech Talks. I don't actually remember, but I'm going to go over towards this. Uh, the third item down on this left navigation is comments. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see any comment that people have made. It, you can see the post that it references. So if I click on that link that says first post, 
it will take me straight to where um, that comment belongs. If I want to, I can reply directly to it. Thanks for the comment. I can have it notify me just in case if there's follow-ups to that. It will shoot me an email. That way I can track those conversations there. I can publish that out, no problem. Um, but if I see this comment is not something that is going to contribute positively, um, I can choose to remove this content. On the right-hand side, we have a couple of things we can do. I can just remove it entirely. I can mark the comment to spam, or I can delete this comment, no problem. And um, yeah, that'll get me there. Um, cool. And you're not the only one that can be in charge of this. You can bring multiple people on a team. You can manage a blog with multiple people on there. So something that you can do um, is if you go to the left navigation bar, you scroll down to settings. Then you scroll down to the uh, permission section um, and then go over to the third option in the permission section that says invite more authors. So if you click on that, You'll have to know their email. Um, once you send this, it will have an email where they can accept. Um, they must be logged in to do that. And then um, if you go over to where it says blog admins and authors, you can click on that and make sure that that person is in, um, specified as an admin on there. You can, by default, I believe when you um, invite them, you can have them be an author. But if you click on admin, then they have the power to help you uh, moderate posts, which is really powerful. Um, but yeah, the, the settings is worth taking a look at and just kind of going through and seeing uh, and controlling what type of access that you have on here. Because the last um, application that I think is worth looking at is security and privacy. So having students protect their identity, making sure, are you putting identifying information? Um, they have locations on, on each of the, the blog posts I believe they have a location section here. So making sure that they are staying anonymous on here, make sure they're not putting that location or making sure that if they're posting images, is this something that is going to personally identify them? So making sure that, you know, students are protecting themselves um, no matter what they do. And in terms of access that you can go to settings and search through and, and check things like, is this blog going to be searchable by engines? If that's not something that you want, you can turn that off real easy. A lot of the stuff can be done at a click of a button or uh, what type of access do readers have? Should this be private in some way? Should this blog only be available to certain authors? And so you could really fine tune what that looks like. There's even something that you can control um, how comments are put on your blogs on here and who has access to that. So really great stuff, worth looking through. And it's things that you can kind of set and forget in a sort of way. But just having that conversation on um, and constantly reminding students like that if you're going to act and model on um, digital citizenship, um, be, really be aware on what your presence is going to be here. Okay, <laughs> I've talked I've talked quite a bit here. And so I might go a little bit over and I think that's all right, but I'm gonna make sure that you get what you need out of this. Okay, um, next, substandards. It's worth taking a look through them. There's four of them. And you can think about these, much like substandards for content um, standards is uh, targets that you can shoot for in here. I've taken the text for them. And by the way, um, this is also a really great resource because if you click on the little camera symbol, it will take you to, to videos about each of these substandards. So real great stuff because usually it comes with some kind of example that you can think about these. But taking these four, substandards. Um, I've uh, tried to simplify them a little bit here. So um, each one of them I've, I've taken and just sort of shortened the text. So the substandards would be managing your digital identity, engaging in safe, positive, legal, ethical behavior, demonstrating understanding and respect and for rights and property, and managing their personal data. So I want to take these and just take a moment to connect them back to those applications that we just talked about on this page. So I'm going to connect these with these. And so I've taken both of them, put them on the same slide here. Um, so you can really think these through and seeing how all of these um, connect between each other. So like, for example, being able to manage your digital identity. If you're conveying ideas through multimedia, you want to make sure you know how you're presenting with yourself. 
uh, whenever you're making your post, making sure that you're not typing something um, that uh, uh, will reveal too much about yourself or if you're commenting um, responsibly with others, the same idea. Okay, sorry, I just need to reset this real quick. There we go. Cool. Um, and of course, I think this really, uh, this aligns best with protecting your identity and your data, what information that you're putting out on there. And so I don't want to necessarily go through each one of these. Um, but yeah, I, I think all of these different substandards match with these applications overlaps with one way or another. And um, yeah, so I, I, I'll briefly touch on uh, like engaging in positive behavior. And so I think that really matches well with working with the commenting features uh, on there. Um, so we're really great and just having those spaces to actually discuss and work through. And so this is something that should be um, intentionally embedded in. So you're not just putting out content, but you're responding it to well and uh, as well in a responsible way. Um, and that's also a place where they can, you know, demonstrate an understanding and respect for others. And then managing your personal data. I mean, it basically is a one-to-one -one for that last little um, application on there as well. And so these, uh, if you're going to walk away with anything, these four, I think, will get you the value, um, a, a, a ton of value on there. And, and I think if you need ideas on, okay, well, um, these are good. Um, and, and, and I try to have them uh, worded in a way to where it's broad and fits a bunch of subjects, but now it's going to take, you know, uh, people who are, um, you know, are, 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 are experts in the content. So you to, to sort of fit these in these little spaces here on these little applications um, and see how they apply in here. And this is the kind of stuff that I would actually love to hear from educators on how they are using these, um, these different applications here um, combined with whatever content that they're working on. So I do have a couple of minutes left. Uh, I just wanna say thank you so much. Um, if you've gotten up to this point, um, I really do appreciate it. Uh, this is a very different type of, of, of tech talk that I'm doing. And so I'm still sort of um, I, I, putting some more structure on it. Um, but I'm hoping at least what you're getting out of this tech talk and the other ones that I'm going to do after the next three that I'm doing is taking this idea of, of citizenship, digital citizenship, and working it through the different standards. And as you start to collect and, and, and build your understanding of them as we're unpacking them, um, see that they deserve a spot inside of your classroom. And this tool, you don't necessarily have to use all of these tools that I'm using. In fact, I, I feel like these standards probably align with the other tools that I'm going to be talking about. And that's fine too. But seeing this as a, a doable thing, a, a, a real tangible thing, like these four things are, it's not necessarily like, you know, uh, 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 it's not, I'm not reinventing the wheel here, but what I, I want to provide for you in this space is uh, you, you being able to take these things and do real practical stuff and get this business out of it because these are things that are going to be invaluable um, to your students no matter what context they're going to be put in so thank you i appreciate your patience i'm hoping this was a valuable use of your time um and uh, let me just wrap up this last minute point in a couple of things in the slides and then we're all done for today and so uh yeah the next page is dedicated to a bunch of resources things that i've used in my research um, I recommend that you take advantage of the digital citizenship stuff up here. Common Sense Education has put out um, essentially a course based by based on grade ranges. They have things that you could practically take out and then just apply directly into Blogger or different other tools that are going to be useful for digital citizenship. So please take a look at it. And of course, ISTE has done some stuff on here as well. So take a look. Um, I also have included the resources for Blogger just in case um, you want to review anything or you need some ideas, there's some great things inside of that. Next page is dedicated to technology integration. I know I've talked a lot, I've talked up ISTE standards a lot, but uh, some other things that I've, I've really 
referenced or in just embedded in the stuff that I've been talking about comes in those technology frame integration frameworks. Um, I think they're worth looking at too. And so, um, yeah, I've included some resources for that to get you, get you, get the brain move in there. And then finally, my last page, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. And I love, I love doing tech talks. I really, truly missed it while we were on the break. Um, and we had quite an interesting summer. Um, but I, I am coming, I've come back. I feel rejuvenated. I feel excited um, that we, we, we get an opportunity to, to work through these. And I'm really, I'm hoping this is a, a starting point for us to, to branch out and start transforming what's happening in classrooms. And I think um, this, this uh, just multi-part, like it's a continual pursuit is, is, is how I envision digital citizenship. Um, I, I'm hoping that if you haven't started with your student, start now. It's not too late. Um, but for right now, let me let me stop talking. Uh, I have a link to the evaluation here. Um, you can use it to, to let me know if you like what, what I'm doing over here. Or if I need some improvements, please let me know. Um, as a reminder, I'm Kishan Hopkins. You should also get to know Kurt Bernhardt. He's in the other Tech Talks as well. But if you want to get to know us, techteam at opsrc.net. Best way to do that. Um, also, check out the other resources on my Tech Talks page. It's all there. I um, mean, this recording will be there as well. And uh, we have little social media buttons out here, a way that you can connect and, you know, be a good digital citizen and seeing how you can contribute and how you can um, reach out and, uh, um, and use other people as resources and do that in a responsible, legal, ethical, safe way. Social media is a good way to do that. So, um, yeah, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Anyways, thank you so much, and I hope everyone has a great day.